Don't be silly, newbie no-nos. You are now part of the Butterfly Initiated. In this segment, I will go over some very common questions that I get, and they do make sense. It's no wonder people ask me these things, but I want to clarify some things that we should not do in our butterfly garden. The first thing is a fruit plate. Remember I mentioned that butterflies don't only drink from flowers, they drink from other things too, including rotten fruit. Many butterflies drink from rotten fruit, and this is a true statement. So when you go to butterfly houses, those places like I, where I used to work, where there's a big enclosure and all these butterflies inside and they have fruit plates with rotting fruit, those are usually catering to very specific butterflies that are from the rainforests where rotten fruit is one of the staples of their diet. If you live in the rainforest, uh, that would make a little bit more sense, but for most of us in the United States, it doesn't make much sense to put a fruit plate out. Now, I'm not saying that you won't get results. You actually might get results if you put some rotten fruit out because certain types of butterflies, by no means all of them, but certain species do prefer rotting fruit. However, uh, they, they don't, well, let's see. But the thing is, rotting fruit will attract all sorts of other pests that you might not want in your garden, like rats and raccoons and possums and, if you don't mind that, and if you don't mind replenishing the rotting fruit on a regular basis, you know, every few days or so, that's fine. When I worked at the butterfly house, we replenish it every morning, which just means that's a lot of work and it's not very sustainable. So don't worry about putting out a fruit plate. I'm not saying it won't work. It actually could attract one or two of your native species, but it's not going to be something that every butterfly in your yard drinks from because not every kind of butterfly drinks from fruit. So spare yourself the hassle unless you really want to make this a full-time job. Another thing I see is butterfly feeders. Um, now this of course is a hummingbird feeder and if you have hummingbird feeders and you've got a very active butterfly garden, you might actually see butterflies on it from time to time. But I want to remind you that butterflies are insects and they don't understand what butterfly feeders are. They don't think like we do. They're not attracted to red the way hummingbirds are. So that's not really something they recognize as a food source. Do you know what they recognize as food sources? Hopefully you do. It's flowers, like we spoke of before. Flowers are natural butterfly feeders and you are far better off just keeping a variety of flowers in bloom, colors and heights of different kinds of flowers. That's the best way to feed your butterflies. I mentioned before that we don't use insecticides in a butterfly garden, and I also mentioned that ladybugs love to eat aphids. And because of that, some people then order ladybugs online to bring into their garden to try to help with pest control. But do you know what happens when you order ladybugs into your garden and take off the lid? They all fly away. I know people will try to sell these to you and tell you that they will not fly away, but that's not true. <laughs> they will. So ladybugs will naturally come to your garden and eat the pests. You do not have to order them online. We don't have to jumpstart nature. All we have to do is give nature what it's already been using for millions of years. This is sort of related to the last thing that I said. You don't need to order your butterflies online. Now you can order butterflies. I'm not against ordering butterflies. When I studied entomology at the university, we had to order butterflies, which is what's in this photo here. There are uses for it. If you're doing it for educational purposes, that's fine. But if you're just trying to stock your butterfly garden, it's probably not going to be very effective because you can order them in and you can raise them, but when you go outside and set them free, they're just going to fly away. You can't really stock your butterfly garden. We know this because universities and experts who study bugs have been trying to repopulate certain areas with butterflies that have gotten endangered in those areas. And in most cases, even those don't take. So if the experts are having a hard time repopulating areas where these butterflies are native to, and they're doing it all in the lab and with high science and research, I doubt you're gonna be able to populate your little garden. There's nothing wrong with doing it, but I'm just saying you could probably save your money and buy more host plants. That would be more effective. 
know people love butterfly houses and I mean look at this one it's adorable they're very cute they're cute if you like garden art but they are not something that butterflies will use butterflies have no idea what this is they don't know that you want them to crawl in it and make a home out of it they're just insects and in fact most butterfly houses get filled with other things that you might not want like wasps so the concept behind this is people know that butterflies kind of hide out for the winter. Remember I talked about during the winter they may become inactive and they hide out in, in trees or in log piles or in rotting logs. So people think, oh great, well then I'll make them a little house, which is fine, but they're not gonna understand that. So if you want it for garden art, great, have at it. But don't expect butterflies to be wintering in your butterfly houses. That's a gimmick. They do not understand that, and it's just not going to happen. Okay, this take action is easy. Just commit to being someone who truly helps conserve butterflies by planting a real habitat with host plants and clarifying some of the silly misinformation out there. Be an active part of the solution. Sometimes the best critique of the bad is the practice of the better.